dark patches on your cheeks, your nose, your forehead, sometimes even your chin. More often than not, this is something called melasma. I'm Dr. Tanvi Vaidya. I'm a board certified dermatologist. And today we're going to talk about why melasma happens, what you can do to fix it, and how you can stop it from coming back. Now, the first question is why melasma even happens in the first place? Usually, this is a combination of multiple factors. For one, genetic factors. By genetic factors, I mean a genetic wiring of your body which is prone to developing this pigmentation in these areas. Uh, your parents may have had it and you may have inherited this tendency from them. Or you yourself have developed this tendency as your own genetic wiring. It may not have been acquired from your parents. I've seen a lot of people whose parents haven't had a single spot on their faces. There's no pigmentation on their faces at all. But for some reason, they develop this pigmentation. So it is irrespective, some sort of tendency that your body has. Point number two is sun exposure. Sun exposure is the biggest factor when we talk about melasma. Um, I've had patients who have been well controlled. We've treated the melasma and it's all settled and gone away. And then they go for this one beach holiday to Goa or you know, they go to their native place and suddenly there's a lot of sun exposure and they start to develop this pigmentation again. So yes, this can happen because sun exposure, whether it's UV light or blue light from your screens or, or infrared radiation, all of it is known to worsen melasma. So avoiding this radiation on your skin is extremely important, whether it be in the form of sunscreen, which is avoiding direct sun exposure, physical means of protection, all of that. Lastly is hormonal factors. Typically in females, we see that whenever there's a major hormonal fluctuation in your body, you tend to develop this pigmentation or if you already have a pre-existing pigmentation, it gets a lot worse. So during pregnancy, when people develop it, it's called cloasma. Or sometimes during menopause, you know, you may have had a borderline some amount of pigmentation and just around your menopause, it worsens so, so much and the pigmentation becomes really, really pronounced. So these are usually the reasons why melasma happens. Uh, some of it is within our control, some of it is not. But what we can control, let's try to work on. Next is the big question, what you've been waiting to hear is how do you treat it? For one, start treatment early. Do not waste time when you have melasma. The deeper the pigment settles, the less likely it is that we would be able to treat it and get it all out. So start treatment the moment you start to notice any amount of pigmentation. That is number one. Next, starting with a skincare routine. You need some level of maintenance, whether you're just treating your melasma or you're maintaining it post your treatment, you need a regular skincare routine. So start with a glycolic acid based face wash in the morning. Top that up with a vitamin C serum. However, do not use vitamin C if you have acne prone skin, rosacea or very sensitive skin. Otherwise, vitamin C works excellently. If you can't use vitamin C, consider using a niacinamide based serum. Top that up with lots and lots of moisturizer and sunscreen. Sunscreen is the key factor here. Use a tinted sunscreen so it also gives you protection against blue light that will majorly help you and make sure to reapply your sunscreen every three to four hours because no sunscreen is going to last beyond that and you need that coverage. You do not need sunscreen application at night once you're asleep of course but throughout the day make sure you're reapplying your sunscreen every three to four hours. Next at night wash your face again with a glycolic acid based face wash then use a kojic acid based serum or an arbutin based serum or a cream to apply on your particularly on your melasma patches top that up again with lots and lots of moisturizer because all of these ingredients are going to dry your skin out avoid using scrubs lemon baking powder and all of that on your face because that is just harsh it's abrasive and it's probably going to worsen your pigmentation so do not do that next go to your dermatologist we start prescription grade treatments that is going to prevent your pigment from going in too deep so particularly in the beginning stages of your melasma, do not skip six months of derma-driven dedicated therapy. And then you can maintain it on your own. We usually start with just creams or serums along with maybe some level of oral medication, which may be antioxidants or an oral tranexamic acid, or, but we need those in the initial stages. If it doesn't respond to that, only then we would move on to chemical peels or laser treatments if needed. That you can think about later, discuss with your dermatologist, but don't skip those six months of prescription grade creams. Now, how do you prevent your melasma from recurring and how do you prevent it from getting worse? Now, the biggest 
point here is that if you have melasma, you must have realized this chronic recurring kind of condition. It's not something you know, I'm just going to treat it for two months and then it's never going to come back. So uh, be mindful of this, that it is not just you go to your dermat, get it fixed and you're good for life. It could very well recur. So you need to use a regular skincare routine, some level of skincare to prevent this from happening again and again. That is very, very important. The biggest thing you can do is sun protect. Majorly, majorly, majorly sun protect. Reapply your sunscreen. As I told you, use a tinted sunscreen. Um, make sunscreens your best friends. Make them a part of your life. If you don't like the texture, there's a lot of people who come and tell me that, you know, I find sunscreen too heavy. They clog my pores. There are so many different sunscreens out there. There are really, really light ones also available. If you like a matte finish, if you like a gel based finish you like a creamy finish everything is available keep trying out different brands you will find something that you eventually do like next avoid spending too much time in hot environments it has been found that spending too much time like for example when you're cooking and you're standing in front of the stove for far too long that could also potentially worsen your melasma so avoid too much of heat exposure next coming to your skincare routine I mentioned kojic acid and glycolic acid before and vitamin C, but along with that, you could also incorporate ingredients like niacinamide, arbutin, uh, lactic acid, tranexamic acid, azelaic acid. All of these work super well as the pigmentary ingredients. However, do remember that all of these ingredients are also going to exfoliate your skin. So moisturize really well. You don't want to end up damaging your barrier while you're fixing your pigmentation. Lastly, you can also consider regular chemical peels or medications once in two months to just maintain your skin and prevent this from recurring again and again. The main goal when we talk about dealing with melasma is to prevent your melasma from worsening. You don't want new patches. You don't want your existing patches getting larger. Along with that, we want to depigment your existing patches. We want them to get smaller. We want them to get lighter. And if possible, we also want them to go away entirely. And that is possible in a lot of cases. So do not give up on this. Now coming to the last and the most important question. Is it realistic to expect your melasma to go away entirely? Yes, it is. But I won't lie. It is a very annoying condition to have. The main deciding factor, you know, what it all comes down to is how deep your pigment is. If your pigment is in the dermis, which is deeper in the skin, it is a little difficult for your pigment to go away entirely. However, we do achieve a good amount of lightening, at least a 40 to 50% lightening, even in dermal cases of melasma. There are, however, very, very resistant cases that we'll have to uh, evaluate you and evaluate your response to existing treatments to decide on how your response is going to be. However, if your pigment is epidermis, that is still superficial, responses are fabulous. And we have seen even complete lightening of the pigment and your patches just disappear. So it is important to consider how deep your pigment is and your responses to existing treatments. If you have any other doubts, do ask me in the comments and I will be happy to answer.